Namaskarams to everybody. On behalf of Sri Shanmukhananda Fine Arts and Sangeeta Sabha, I take great pleasure in welcoming you all to a very, very special evening to celebrate 
the Mahakumbhavishekha Vaibhavam of Prabhu Sri Ram's temple in Ayodhya that most of us may have witnessed earlier today through our televisions or YouTube or maybe even in Prabhu Sri Ram's Janmasthan, Ayodhya. Today's program has been beautifully conceptualized by our president, Dr. Shankar, who had the foresight to place an order one year ago for these divine radiant murtis that you see here. Over 45 kilograms of pancha dhatu, which have been specially made for today's program. And here closer to me, we can also see on display the very special international edition of the Ramayanam. It is thanks to all the great works by sages like Valmiki that the glory of Prabhu Sri Ram has spread far and wide, reaching international shores. Without further ado, we begin today's proceedings with auspicious Vedic invocation by the students of SIES Nerul Veda Patashala. Thank you so much. Now, our Sangeeta Vidyalaya student, Varsha Lakshmi, will render a prayer on Lord Rama. Rakhunayaka ni 
ಪಾದಯೋಗ ರಘುನಾಯಕ ಪಾದಯೋಗ ರಾಜೀವ ಮೂಲನೆ ವಿತಚಾಲ ಶ್ರೀ ರಘುನಾಯಕ ಪಾದಯೋಗ ರಾಜೀವ ಮೂಲನೆ ವಿತಚಾಲ ಶ್ರೀ ರಘುನಾಯ ಕಾಲಿ ಪಾದಯೋಗ ರಾಜೀವ ಮೂಲನೆ ವಿತಜಾಲ ಶ್ರೀ ರಘು ನಾಯಕ ಗಜಾಲ ಮೂಲ ಅಗಜಾಲ ಮೂಲ ವರ ತೋಲಿನ ಗಜಾಲ ಮೂಲ ವರ ತೋಲಿನ ಆದ್ರೂಪನಿ ವೇಗತಿ ಗಾನ ಶ್ರೀ ಶ್ರೀರಘುನಾಯಕಾಲಿ ಪಾದಯೋಗ ರಾಜೀವ ಮೂಲನೆ ವಿತಜಾಲ ಶ್ರೀರಘುನಾಯಕ ಭವ ಸಾಗರ ಮೂತಾಲೇಕನೆ ಭವ ಸಾಗರ ಮೂತಾಲೇಕನೆ ಬಾಲು ಕಾಸಿ ವಡಿನಿ ಮರು ಕುಜರಿತಿ ಭವ ಸಾಗರ ಮೂತಾಲೇಕನೆ ಬಾಲು ಕಾಸಿ ವಡಿನಿ ಮರು ಕುಜರಿತಿ ಅವನಿ ಜಾದಿಪ್ಪ ಶ್ರಿತ ರಕ್ಷಕ ಅವನಿ ಜಾದಿಪ್ಪ ಶ್ರಿತ ರಕ್ಷಕ ಅವನಿ ಜಾದಿಪ್ಪ ಶ್ರಿತ ರಕ್ಷಕ ಆನಂದ ಕರ ಶ್ರೀ ತ್ಯಾಗರಾಜನೂತ ಕರ ಶ್ರೀ ತ್ಯಾಗರಾಜನೂತ ರಘುನಾಯ ಕಾಲಿ ಪಾದಯೋಗ ರಾಜೀವ ಮೂಲನೆ ವಿತಜಾಲ ಶ್ರೀ ರಘು ನಾಯ Thank you so much for that auspicious start, Varsha Lakshmi. I now request our President, Dr. Shankar, to please deliver the keynote address for today. ಆಪತಾಂ ಅಪಹರ್ತಾರಂ ದಾತಾರಂ ಸರ್ವಸಂಪತಾಂ ಲೋಕಾಭಿರಾಮಂ ಶ್ರೀರಾಮಂ ಭೂಯೋ ಭೂಯೋ ನಮಾಮ್ಯಹಂ ರಾಮಾಯ ರಾಮಭದ್ರಾಯ ರಾಮಚಂದ್ರಾಯ ವೇಗಸೆ ರಘುನಾಥಾಯ ನಾಥಾಯ ಸೀತಾಪತೇ ನಮಃ ಸೀಕಿಂಗ್ ದ ಬೆನಡಿಕ್ಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ರಾಮಚಂದ್ರ ಮೂರ್ತಿ ಫಾರ್ ದಿ ವೆಲ್ಫೇರ್ ಆಫ್ ಹ್ಯುಮ್ಯಾನಿಟಿ ಐ ರೇಸ್ ಟು ಅಡ್ರೆಸ್ ಯು ಟುಡೇ ಇಟ್ ಗೀವ್ಸ್ ಮಿ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಪ್ಲೇಷರ್ ಟು ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಯು ಆಲ್ ಟು ದಿಸ್ ಪ್ಲೆಸೆಂಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸಾಲಮ್ ಫಂಕ್ಷನ್ organized this evening on the occasion of the commemoration of the pranapratishta of ram lalla in his janmasthan in ayodhya it is a watershed in the long history of our civilization which spans several millennia and predates all other civilizations of the world it's a red letter day in the history of free and independent india that at long last the aastha the akanksha the abhilasha the aspirations of countless number of ram bhaktas 
in the country and even beyond have been fulfilled with the consecration of Lord Rama in his Janmasthan. Babur invaded India in the year 1526. He came from the Hindu Kush region, the northern plains now presently called as Afghanistan. And whatever he came across in the northern plains of the country, the low down Himalayas, he plundered and looted everything that came his way and demolished every temple of faith that came along his way. In the year 1528, Baba reached Ayodhya and the temple of Ramlalla unfortunately fell a victim to his savagery and brutality. It has taken 495 years to be precise for getting Ramlalla back into the abode from where he was worshipped from his Janmasthan. During this interregnum of 495 years, 240 years pertained to the British rule in India. The country was reduced to a vassal state, subordinated to the crown, and the oft-acclaimed policy of the British of divide and rule fitted very well to keep the issue burning and alive during the course of the colonization of our country. But it's a sad irony that it has taken 75 years after India secured its freedom and independence to get this beautiful day for all of us. Succeeding generations of politicians, people who are elected to power, all in the name of electoral gains and petty politics, have impeded the Janmabhumi movement. There is a school of thought that it was not Babur who demolished this temple at Ayodhya, that it was indeed Aurangzeb who had demolished it. But the fact that the mosque that was erected on the ruins of the temple always was called as Babri Masjid. Therefore, it gives full credence to the fact that it is Babur and Babur alone who had demolished the Ram temple at Ayodhya. Today is a day for thanksgiving. And of course, to Prabhu Ramachandra Murthy for having given us this blessed day. The Isha Upanishad says, Isha Vasyam Idam Sarvam Yat Kanchani Jagatyam Jagat Whatever happens, wherever happens is permeated by the same divine force. It is that divine force, those positive forces that have given us this blessed day today. It's also a day for remembering, thanksgiving for countless number of people, countless number of people who had sacrificed their lives in the cause of the Janmabhumi for Ram over these 495 years. There are still some who had pledged their entire life for the cause of Ram Temple and there are still few who had made a noticeable contribution to the progress of the Janmabhumi movement that had ultimately resulted in what we are experiencing today. First and foremost, our eternal gratitude vests with the Archaeological Society of India and particularly with its Northern Division, its Director Professor Lal and the subsequent task force which is headed by K.K. Ahmad. He kept his faith behind his profession. Painstakingly went about collecting the soil around the Janmasthan based on the mandate given by the Allahabad High Court. And the evidence that were being created and compiled led to a conclusive evidence that there existed a temple on the ruins of which the mosque was erected. And this was a clinching evidence in later years to determine the title to the property of the land on which the Janmasthan temple has been erected. Second, of course, is to the majestic nature of the judiciary of this land. It had taken several years in the lower courts and in the Allahabad High Court. When all the appeals against the orders of the Allahabad High Court, the intervention applications, the miscellaneous applications, the interlocutory proceedings, all combined together, reached the Supreme Court of India. There also it languished for some time, till a judge came who took unto himself that it shall be decided 
during his tenure of office in the Supreme Court. To Ranjan Gogai, we are eternally grateful for not only ensuring that the matter was accelerated on to the main board, he constituted a full bench, a bench of five judges to hear the matter and that too on a day-to-day -day basis with no excuse for adjournments. And he had committed that the judgment shall be delivered before he demits office on superannuation. These five judges of which Ranjan Gogai was the presiding judge as the Chief Justice of the Court and two other judges who later became the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court with the current one who was also part of uh, the bench and two others gave an unanimous verdict in favour of the Hindu petitioners rejecting the claims of the Waqf Board and countless number of Muslim petitioners who had come along claiming pieces and parcels of land in the total acres of land that were available in the Janmasthan. We take a bow for Judge Nasir. Abdul Nasir was a man who believed nation first, justice always and self last. He joined his brother judges in giving an unanimous verdict which paved the way for the temple that has been erected on that land. When the Janmabhoomi case was being heard at lightning speed, Indian jurisprudence says that the idol is also a juridical person. It is entitled to sue and be sued upon. And it fell onto the shoulders of the non-Nigerian senior advocate, former Solicitor General of India, K. Parasaran, to defend Ram Lalla himself. At that ripe age of 90, when he touched on to the Supreme Court of India, he extensively went through the title deeds of the property, leaving no doubt for the judges to believe that the Hindu petitioners who had claimed ownership to the land alone could be the owners of that land. Not only that, he took the judges through several facets of various religions, Hindu, Islam, Sikhism too, as to where a temple ought to be, where a mosque ought to be, or where a mosque ought not to be or a temple ought not to be, and what are the essential elements of a place of faith where a worship takes place in all religions of the world. He quoted copiously, generously from the seven volumes of Voice of God, which were based on the discourses of the Mahaswami of Kanchi, in whose name this institution remains. Such was the profound impact it made on the judges that they intervened and said that they can take nothing on record unless they too get copies of the books on which Parasaran was keeping reliance on. Parasaran pleaded innocence to say, I don't know, I was given these copies, I don't know who are the publishers who are giving it across. Ultimately, it fell onto my shoulders as the publisher of these books to address the needs of the judges. When the judges themselves came on the line to me and said, please give us these copies if we have to rely on them. So to all the five judges of the Supreme Court and then to the library of the Supreme Court and to the Registrar General's office, seven volumes of Voice of God, each set of them were given to them. Of course at a price because the Supreme Court will never take it gratis. Even though I said these are not books for sale, but then it was given to them for a price at which alone they could take. In a small way, the discourses of the sage of Kanchi too had contributed to the success of the litigation in the Supreme Court of India. When Parasaran was arguing the case, four and a half hours together, when that old man were to stand and plead his advocacy before the judges, the judges took compassion on him and told him, you can sit down and argue. To which Parasaran said, all my life, I have taken briefs from several of my paid clients. I have stood my ground and advocated their cause. How blessed I am today that I am defending the Lord himself. I can never imagine 
that I can sit down and defend him. All through the proceedings in the Supreme Court of India, he came barefoot, keeping his slippers outside the chambers of the Chief Justice. We bow to that devotion, that regard, in addition to the acumen of, legal acumen of Parashran, which has won the day, which has given us this day today. <laughs> the thoughts of the sage of Kanchi had such a profound impact on the judges that one of the judges of the bench, who later became the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of India, had to call me up and say, I now need copies in Marathi. And fortunately for me, we had translated in almost all the languages. So, Sadguru Vachanamrut was given to him and he said it's for my mother because she said, you cannot read unless you get me one. And all during the, his tenure in the Supreme Court, every day, he used to read ten pages of Voice of God before reaching the Supreme Court. He has retired, he has a peaceful life now at Nagpur and he continues to do it. Both his wife and her mother also join him in reading a minimum of 10 pages every day. Such is the impact that the sage had made on the judiciary, on the advocates to carry the day in the Supreme Court of India. In the year 1986, thanks to the orders of the lower court, inspired by one man which history has never given due recognition, it is Arun Nehru. The locks of the Ram Lala temple were opened up for darshan. And when they were opened up for darshan, the very next day, the Mahaswami of Kanchi ordered to make a silver chatram and two samrams, again made of silver, to be given to Ram Lala. He directed his disciple, Jayendra Saraswati Swamigal, who was already on a Uttara Parikrama. He was walking those days to walk down to Ayodhya and offer it reverentially to Ram Lalla. And which Jayendra Saraswati Swamigal did with great reverence and regard. And from that day, in the year 1986, he became the chief spokesman, appealing and exhorting countrymen to work towards the realization of a temple for Lord Ram in Ayodhya. Alimi Nadri is one of the foremost Islamic scholars of our living times. He was the president of the All India Muslim Personal Law Board. He had great regard and reverence for the Mahaswami of Kanchi. So he came all the way to Kanchipuram, took darshan of the sage and pleaded with him to bring both the Muslims and the Hindus together and resolve this issue and stop once for all destruction to life and property that has been taking place wantonly all across the country. The sage by the time had already abdicated his pontificate and was engaged in higher purposes of life to reach to Almighty. And he therefore directed his disciple, Jayendra Sassu Swamigal, to work as a mediator to help resolve the issue. The then Bade Pradhan of the country, Swargiya Bharatratna Atal Bihari Vajpayeeji, he requested the sage of Kanchi, Jayendra Swamigal, to do the mediation on behalf of the government of India. Such was the Catholicity, the honesty, sincerity of purpose, fairness in dealings of Jayendra Bariva that he endeared himself to the Muslim brethren in no time. Over several rounds of negotiations, he ultimately brought about a settlement for the Janmabhumi land. And this was endorsed by the All India Muslim Personal Law Board. Then he said, again based on what Mr. Vajpayee requested him to say, that you announce it to the country after one week, because I need to take it to my people and to the cabinet and others before it can come to the public domain. But seven days in politics is too long a period. To a section of the government, they felt it is a sellout. They refused to toe the line and put 
undue pressure on Vajpayee to the extent that he would have lost his government. Emissaries were sent across at dead of night to plead with the sage of Kanchi to alter the terms of settlement which the sage would not. Because he had earned such credibility in his negotiations as a mediator that he said, I can't do that. And then it fell on the government to modify that final settlement. And all that they did was to say that Mathura and Kashi will be excluded from the scope of the settlement while the sage had included them as part of the settlement, saying that Hindus will not raise the issue of Mathura and Kashi after Ayodhya is given to them. It took no time for the All India Muslim Prasala board from Lucknow to throw that settlement into the garbage. It has taken 21 long years since then to get this day when Ramlala gets to his rightful abode. On the 7th of July 2003, the sage of Kanchi had announced that he will hold a press conference at New Delhi and give the terms of settlement of this entire issue. That day did come and the sage was forced to say that Mathura and Kashi will be excluded. And he regretted that for the rest of his life till he demised. So this was the history of what had happened during that time. When the foundation stone for the Janmabhumi temple was laid on the 5th of August 2020, the present sage of Kanchi, Puji Sri Shankar Vijayendra Sarsaswamigal, sent across five priests to for, perform the Bhumi Pujin. Not only that, he gave a wooden shank, shank is conch, a big wooden shank, and several coins in gold and silver of Ramlala and Lakshmi to be placed in the pit on which the foundation was laid, over which the Garbhagraham has come today. He also gave a Tanjore painting of Ramlala and Lakshmi to be kept in the temple later after the temple sees the light of the day. Even the various vidis that are being performed today or five or seven days before were all formulated by the sage of Kanchi. He nominated five scholars from Kashi who were mandated to detail the entire vidhi for the pranapatishta to be done. So he does not lie in the mouth of a few Shankracharyas of north of India to say that the date is not auspicious, the temple is not completed because they found it difficult to accept the fact that there is no space for them in the most visible space of Ram Janmabhumi, which is before the nation. And slowly, they too are making amends to say that there could have been no better day than this day. This is the contribution of the Kanchi Kamakoti Pitam and the Ram Temple at Ayodhya. Let me now take you to things which you would never know, to the larger plank of the connect between Kanchipuram and Ayodhya. In Brahmanda Purana, which is one of the 18 Puranas that Bhagavan Vedavyasa wrote, both these are referred to as the Prithvi Shetras of the Panchabhuta Shetras of ascribed to Lord Shiva. These two are also a part of the Moksha Puris. It's the belief of Hindus that if a person is born in any of these seven places and it demises there, he will be liberated from the bondage of the cycle of birth and death. Punarapi Jananam, Punarapi Maranam, said Adi Shankara in Bajagovindam. That liberation will come to him if he were to be born over there. Ayodhya, Mathura, Maya, Kashi, Kanchi, Avantika, Dwaraka, Puri, Ete, Sapta, Moksha, Puri. In chapter 39 and 40 of Lalitopyaginam of Brahmanda Purana, there is reference to Lord Rama and Kanchipuram. King Dasharatha bemoaned the fact that despite the several tapas that he has done and the yagas that he had performed, 
self purification that he had done he could not beget children from his several wives one day in his dreams the call of the yonder came beckoned him to go 2000 miles away to kanchipuram to have darshan of amba kamakshi and amba's blessings be taken before he can think of deliverance for the pain that he is suffering so dasharatha along with his wives came all the way to kanchipuram interred himself in the sanctum sanctorum of the goddess mediated upon her intensely and also performed a putra kamishti yagyam in kanchipuram which pleased the devotee the god to no end she blessed him and therefore when he returned to ayodhya it was kausalya who conceived first and lord rama was born out of her womb if ayodhya is the janmasthan of uh, lord rama the origin of his birth can be related to kanchipuram so this is the national integration that we are talking about right from the times of the puranas there are several versions of ramayana after valmiki had first written it but there is one commonality consistency only in the yuddha kantam and the vijaya kantam all of them have agreed that when lord rama vanquished ravana that day he celebrated as the day of victory of goodness over evil and that day we call it as dashera it is done on the dashami day the 10th day after the 9 days of shravana navaratri in the shravana period which are devoted to the three goddesses durga lakshmi and saraswati so vijaya dashami day is the day on which lord rama vanquished ravana he then handed over the kingdom to his devotee and the brother of ravana vibhishana vibhishana pleaded with rama that he should rule the kingdom of uh, sri lanka and that he pledged himself at his lotus feet for the rest of his life to be of service to lord rama it was then that lord rama gave those words of wisdom which have set the gold standards for what you and i today loosely understand as patriotism or nationalism when rama said janani janma bhumischa swargad api gariyasi mother and motherland are greater than paradise on the earth and therefore he bequeathed the kingdom to vibhishana and told him it's your motherland and then he found his way to his motherland when he came to ayodhya the entire town wore a festive look all the people had come down onto the streets of ayodhya in their choicest dresses they were singing dancing temple bells were chiming and the best of religious offerings were done in temples across ayodhya on the return of lord rama to ayodhya and diyas were lit and then diyas were lit across the temples across the roads of ayodhya there was an avali of the deepas avali in sanskrit means row or series when the lambs are kept in a series like what you see over here it is called as deepavali so that is why the day when rama returned to ayodhya is celebrated as deepavali in addition subsequently because krishna avataram came much later narakasura vada which took place is also taken as the day of victory of forces of goodness over evil for deepavali but the origin of deepavali is lord rama's return to ayodhya if his return to ayodhya after 14 years could have generated so much of enthusiasm so much of festivity it has taken 495 years to get him back to ayodhya 
So the celebrations should have a geometric scale. That is why the entire country is celebrating today. Diyas are lit across not only the temples of the land, even there are a thousand mosques which are today been lit with uh, Diyas. Public places are lit, schools and colleges are lit, assemblies and auditoriums are lit and therefore we can be no exception to that. But it has taken 34 long years for this Sabha to have the lamps lit over here. On the 28th of February 1990, one small wick was good enough to bring the entire building down. And from then on, there was no lighting of the lamps over here. And today we have 1008 Ram Jyotis, as we have called it, lit across the auditorium, including the front of this auditorium. But over these three decades, technology has also progressed. So we don't need now oil and wick. These are all water-based lamps. And they being not flammable will not destroy this auditorium. So you all can be rest assured that nothing will happen <laughs> by letting this auditorium with this advancement in technology that lits a lamp with water. And that's what we have done. And in our own core competence, in the field in which we know, we decided to offer it to Lord Rama today. And that is why we said we will give him a Sangeet Abhishekam. Because that is our core competence. And we wanted to weave a garland of Kritis written by several Vagekaras in several languages starting from Avad and all the languages of the South which are conventionally used in Carnatic music. Weave them as a garland across the life journey of Lord Rama on this planet Earth. And that is the reason why we sit of the seven khandas that are written over there for you, which are the stages of evolution of Lord Rama. The Kritis have been selected for each of this uh, stage of evolution of the Lord as he emerged as a Lord later. And simultaneously there shall be an Abhishekam to Lord. This is a Sangeet Abhishekam that is an Abhishekam with the Vedic rituals to him. One year before we decided that this day in the month of January will come. And I think our prophecy was stronger than that of even the Prime Minister, I think. <laughs> because when Uttarayanam comes, good things will come. So we were damn sure that it is going to come. And we had ordered these beautiful vigrahas of the Panchadatu, the Panchalokas, then soaked in gold and given to us from the distant Anachi Arkoil in the Tanjur district of Tamil Nadu. So today if they are available to you, they all were done a year before and brought in, waiting for this day, if this morning, this afternoon, the idol for Lord Ram of Yogi Raj of Karnataka at the first, the Abhishekam did not take place, subsequently they had done. Our Lord also gets the first Abhishekam for the Uttam Murti today. So, to those of us who had not seen what happened in Ayodhya in the afternoon today, you could very well see it when it happens <laughs> over here. There can never be a day better than this day to have the consecration, the Prana Pratishta of Ram Lalla being done. There have been several claims, counterclaims from people, learned, erudite people, who started saying, why not during Ramanomi? But to all of them, these days were settled by the sage of Kanchi in consultation with five of the senior most scholars from, Vashi, uh, from uh, Kashi who had chronicled the complete sequence of events. It is Uttrayanam. The Dakshinayanam face has gone. The moon now waxes from a face of waning he is in the upper curve. And uh, the entire consecration was done at the Abhijit Muhurtam of 1220, 1219 and odd, which is again ascribed to Lord Shiva when he vanquished the Asura and uh, Tripurasura, which again symbolizes the destruction of all evil forces. 
द स्टार फॉर द डे इज मृगशीषम मृगशीषम सिंबलाइज बाई द डियर ईज ऑफ लॉर्ड सोमा द मून गॉड एंड इट इज द गॉड ऑफ इमोर्टैलिटी एंड दैट गॉड इज द एपिटोम ऑफ नॉलेज एंड एक्सपीरियंस and i should tell you mrugashisham is also the janma nakshatram of the senior sage of shingeri sharta pitam his holiness bharti tirtha mahasanidanam so this day is also a amrita siddha yogam and sarva siddhi yogam i would genuinely believe that if religious scholars were to get into politics because they didn't get space it's time they realize that there are equally good scholars who can also decide what the scriptures say on such a beautiful occasion this day we were all blessed to have witnessed ram lalla in his janmasthan and to get a dt like that lam pola janmathu புண்ணியம் பண்ணுறதா தான் அதுபோல் டிடியை பார்க்க முடியும் ஊஸ் ஐஸ் ஆர் டூ ஷார்ப் அனப் ஃபார் யூ டு சி இன் தட் பாலகாண்டம் ஆஃப் த லார்ட் இன்சல் தட்ஸ் வை இஸ் லல்லா ஓவர் தேர் பிகாஸ் டு சம் ஆஃப் ஹூ ஸ்டார்டட் ஆஸ்கிங் தெர் இஸ் நோ சீதா ஓவர் தேர் தெர் இஸ் நோ ஆஞ்சனே ஓவர் தேர் ஈ இஸ் அ சைல்ட் ஹூ ஹஸ் நாட் எட் பீன் மேரிட் ஸோ தட்ஸ் வை இட்ஸ் ராம் லல்லா ஓவர் தேர் ராமோ விக்ரவான் தர்மா the scriptures did not say this it was the demon marisan who told ravana when he implored marisan to abduct sita from dandakaranya and bring her to lanka he said rama is the epitome of dharma and then he said rama is dharma himself he pleaded with ravana that this should not be done but vinashakale viparita buddhi so that the rest is all history and we belong to a religion which is vaidika sanatana dharmam so our religion's primary focus is dharmam and that is why you can see the clamoring in north of india wherever you go dharma ka vijay ho adharma ka nash ho they don't want adharma to survive only dharma should survive is the epitome of dharma valmiki described rama to narada with the 16 qualities that made him very unique but the scriptures speak of only six qualities for the lord udyamam sahasam dairyam budhirshaktir parakramah shatate yatra dasyante devo pitatr dishtati don't have to look upwards for the lord in any person who, where you see these six qualities the lord will be seen over there these qualities were available in full measure much more than 100 person in rama that is why he not only acquired godliness he became god himself in the treta yuga he conclusively proved that an ordinary human being can also raise through righteousness and good conduct to become the lord himself that is why of the 10 avatara that we have the rama avatara came signifying dharma and as the prime minister said this afternoon this is the essence of the consecration that as vishwa gurus which we were several several millenniums before it's time to use the tenets of dharma and righteousness that lord rama gave to take it across the shores of this country without any discrimination without any classification that is the greatness of the consecration that has taken place today it is one thing to celebrate a day one day and then every one of us will forget it's time that the government goes beyond the consecration that has been very successfully done to declare possibly this day as the national day of reconciliation when the dancha was brought down the 6th of december 1992 it had brought about an irrevocable irredeemable cleavage between the hindus and the muslims a spectator of insecurity 
came across both the religions in their vyavaharas a nation got divided vertically across two faiths which are the dominant faiths in the nation to the countless number of muslims that i had said who had done well to support the cause of ram lalla i add one more to you the ram janmabhumi tirtha kshetra trust for the nyas has done well to promote this principle of reconciliation therefore they took the invitation and went all the way to iqbal ansari the original petitioner his father was the original petitioner he died he has sustained it over the last half a century and he had come back from the namaz on the friday afternoon last friday when it was handed over to him and requested to attend and this is what he said ram does not belong only to you imam e hind he said he the spiritual guru of the entire country hind therefore we have equal claim on him as you have and he accepted the invitation and he came it is that spirit of reconciliation that needs to be carried forward as we celebrate this day every year world over this day is celebrated as the un declared day for sanctity of human life that's how it's being celebrated today there can be no better embodiment than lord rama as the best sanctity of what human life can be as the world celebrates sanctity of life india celebrates lord rama as the best epitome of that and soon this may go across to the world to celebrate this day as the day of human sanctity depicted by lord rama as i come to the end of my address this evening long as it were because i gave you stories which were outside the public domain today because i had a very had a very long uh, innings to play in ram janmabhoomi moment and i can not share the other things which are over there but whatever i gave can be for public consumption this evening may the good lord bless us all may we incorporate into our lives through passage of time in this eternal quest in our pilgrimage of perfection a little of those six gunas that lord rama had and make our life sublime thank you and god bless thank you so much for that deeply insightful keynote address dr shankar we now come to the highlight of this evening as shankar sir has aptly conceptualized it and planned this almost a year in advance we are having a special sangeet abhishegam to prabhu shri ramachandra murthy a special program where we have as he explained on one side songs being sung about the glory of his divine life journey while on the other side we have a simultaneous abhishekam being performed for the special murtis that we have here the musical program has been curated by our guru sangeet natak academy awardee shanmukha sangeeta pracharya guru shrimati radha nambodri madam she has taken great efforts to delve deep into a variety of compositions analyze their meanings vis-a-vis -vis the sequence of events in the ramayana the result of all the hard work by her team is what you will witness today a garland of carefully selected snippets from various compositions spanning different composers different languages different genres of classical music different ragams talams moods and tempos interspersed with relevant commentary to bring out the various events in the complete storyline of ramayanam through each of the seven kandams the lyrics and the meanings of the compositions will be displayed on the two side screens as we sing so that all of you can relate to 
and experience the beauty of the words. The music will also be supported by beautiful images on the backdrop which will help transport all of us to the life and glorious times of Lord Sri Ram. Before we begin the program, I would like to introduce the artists on and backstage today. I request uh, Srimati Usha Ravi and Sri Veera Raghavan, our honorary secretaries, to please come up on stage to honor the artists. We start with the Guru, the SNA awardee and Shanmukha Sangeeta Pracharya, Guru Srimati Radha Nambudri. On vocal, we have her students, Dharini Veera Raghavan. Dharini is also a Shanmukha Sangeeta Shiromani awardee. And just yesterday in Chennai, she has won the Times Award, the very first prize. Vimarshini Santosh. Gayatri Krishna Chandran, Meera Shridhar, Hari Kumar. We are proud to say that most of those you will see on stage are also alumni of our Sangeeta Vidyalaya. And myself, Anupama Devarajan. On the vocals, we will also have our Sabha's Sangeeta Vidyalaya students from the 5th year, 7th year and the Carnatic Vocal Diploma who have been trained by the Principal Srimati Shyamala Sajnani and the teachers Bhavani Srinivasan, Rohini Venkatachalam and Srimati Bharti Ramakrishna. The students are Jay Hansika, Moktika, Lakshita, Matangi, Advait, Yuvashri, Varalakshmi, and Kajolini. Coming to the accompanying artist today, we have on the violin Sri Bala Subramanian R. Sharma, who is also a, a guru in our Sangeeta Vidyalaya and a very accomplished violin artist. And he is also not just a violin teacher, but he has also started the keyboard classes, Carnatic keyboard classes in our Vidyalaya. On the flute, we have Sri Aditya Ganesh. On the Veena, Srimati Praveena Gautaman. Mridangam by our very own Sri Rohit Prasad, also a Sangeeta Shiromani awardee. On the Ghatam, we have Sri Shri Ram Rajan.
And on the Ganjira, we have Sri Gopalakrishnan Raman. Who needs no introduction. The script and the LED presentations have been done by Saroja Ganapati and Nalini Dinesh. On behalf of all of us, Guru Srimati Radha Nambudri, her students, and the Sangeeta Vidyalaya, all of us would like to thank the Sabha, the President Dr. Shankar, and all the managing committee members for this wonderful opportunity to take part and be a small part of such a grand celebration. We are truly honored to be here this divine evening. And it has been a very enriching journey for all of us. And we have not just learned many new compositions, but we have also gone very deep into the meanings and learned many lesser known details about Prabhu Sri Rama's life story. I now hand over to the compere for the rest of the program, Srimati Jayashi Suresh. Good evening. Ramo Vigrahavan Dharmaha. If Dharma had a human form, then it is Rama. He is also called the Maryada Purushottam, and his rule is called the Rama Rajya, which is why the Ramayana resonates with each and every individual. The Itihasa of Rama is narrated, enacted, sung, and performed all over India and even parts of Asia where people celebrate his divinity. But most of all, he's human as much as he's God. From Adi Kavi Valmiki's Sanskrit telling to Santa Tulasi Das's Ram Charita Manasi Navadhi, from Kamba Ramayanam in Tamil and Tunjattu Eritachans Adhyatma Ramayanam in Malayalam to Ramakin in Thai, Rama rules the hearts of many. Shri Rama Rama Rameti, Rame Rame Manurame, Sahasra Nama Tattulyam, Rama Nama Varanane. Just like this one Taraka Mantra, Rama, is equal to a thousand names of Vishnu, the 24,000 verses of Valmiki's Ramayana can be condensed in one shloka, the Eka Shloki Ramayana. Ram, 
The glorious golden hued form of a child. The song captures the rapture of Rama's most famous devotee in the Carnatic music tradition as he was blessed with the vision of the Lord.
Shasti suggests that Kaushalya, even as she carried this child in her womb, had a glimpse of the dark hued Vishnu adorned with flowers and divine weapons, his face very much like the moon.
captures many events of the Balakantam, hailing Rama as the one who was born as the fruit of Dasharatha's great penance. It describes him as one who vanquished the demons to protect the sages like us and the one who freed Ahalya from the curse that had turned her into stone. of Rama for the first time. It is the other way around.
Kalyana Rama describes Rama as the handsome groom bedecked with jewels, and Tyagara does Sita Kalyana by Gogame, sung at all weddings, describes the auspicious moment when Rama and Sita are united in marriage. Ayodhya Kandam, we hail Rama's return to Ayodhya with Sita, 
or most joyous and much awaited event follows when King Dasharatha announces Rama's coronation as the Yuvaraja. The entire kingdom erupts with happiness while Kai Kei shares these sentiments, singing the praise of the eldest son of Dasharatha and resisting Madara's attempts to poison her mind. This episode is captured in Arunachala Kavi's Ramanatakam in the song Ramarak Mannan Modi Darittari.
Apologies for the interruption. There is uh, a car car blocking 0459. Whoever is the owner, please kindly clear the vehicle. Sorry for that interruption. As the exiles spend their days in the forest, Bharata visits, bearing the sad news of King Dasharatha's demise. When Rama does not relent at his entreaties to return, Bharata carries away his Padukas, vowing to rule only as Rama's representative until his return back to Ayodhya. This devotion of Bharata is recalled by Santa Tulsi Das in Bhajamana Rama Charan Sukhadai. Backstage, 
once the program is over in the car parking area behind the kishkinda kangam talks about a region called kishkinda which is current today hampi There was a mix up I'm sorry my lines had gotten the song the shabri bhagyam comes now tyagaraja exults calling it bhagyam where the innocent devotion merits the lord's blessing and she thus attains salvation shabri is bhakti
Kishkinda Kandam talks about a region called Kishkinda, which is current day Hampi. It was a kingdom ruled by the Vanaras. In Brocheva Revere, Yadaraja recalls several episodes from Rama's life and amongst them events from the Kishkinda Kandam, such as the vanquishing of Bali and the crowning of Sugriva. Bhadrachala Ramadas too hails the powerful Rama as the friend and well-wisher of Sugriva in Emanya Rama.
Maharas shows us a human God who befriends all creatures and fights to secure justice for others. Let us linger on this Rama Awai chanting his name. auspicious and oft read section of the Ramayana is the Sundar Kandam, where the persona at the center is not Rama himself but his ardent devotee Hanuman. Hanuman is believed to have been called Sundara by his mother Anjana and that is why Valmiki is stated to have chosen this name above all others as this Kandam. As this Kandam is about Hanuman's selflessness, his devotion to Rama, and about his journey to Lanka. In Anjaneya Raghurama Dhuta, Maharaja Swati Tirunal extols this Rama Bhakta of infinite promise who leapt over the ocean in search of Sita and set fire to Lanka, terrorizing Ravana's demons. Arunachala Kavi captures Hanuman's joy at having accomplished his mission and cited Mother Sita.
episode of Setu Bandhanam in the Yuddha Kandam illustrates how the elements were revered. Rama lay on a bed of Darbha grass while observing a penance to please the god of oceans in order to build a bridge across to Lanka. This Kshetram is called Tirupullani. Muthuswami Dikshitar recalls this episode in the Kriti Shri Ramam Ravi Kulabdi Somam where he describes Rama as Dhanava Kula Bhikaram or the nemesis of Aturas, Asuras and says Sudarbha Shayanam the one who lay on the bed of Darbha grass.
whenever we sing about Rama, we cannot help but go back to Tyagaraja time and again. In Sarasa Samadana Bheda Danda Chatura, Tyagaraja Swami describes Rama as adept in negotiation and persuasion. Ravana, however, is not influenced by any of these conciliatory actions and thereby merits only danda or punishment.
the life of Rama is recorded in song by one and all, beginning with his own sons in the Uttarakhanda. Mysore Vasudeva Charya in the Kriti Dasharate Pahima describes Rama as Kushalavadana Lola. The twins sing Rama's praise in his court as we do here today. Magnum Opus Bhavayami Raghuramam. 
Every charanam in this ragamalika describes each of the kandams we have narrated so far, leading us through them to relive the blissful moment of Rama's Pattabhishekam.
Sankirtanam, where we urge the audience to join the artists if possible. Before we conclude with the Mangal, thank you.
scintillating performance. I'm sure all of you are hungry. The management humbly requests every devotee to please partake the prasadam, which is being served at the back, as was mentioned below. I thank all of you for your presence here. And I think one round of applause for Radha teacher once again. Because it is done in a very short time. The planning, the execution, and it's all the voices to sound as one is not easy. Impeccable practice, excruciating practice, a lot of last minute changes, but it's all come together. And I thank all, all of you, the audience, for coming and making this a huge success. Jai Shri Ram. राम से चल के राम प्यार 